Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot, sniffing out the mad cheese as always. Got another top five video for you guys today. Today, I'm going to be going over my top five defenses. That's right. I already put out top five pass plays, top five run plays. I will have links in the description below for that. But if you guys want to see more videos like this, as always, hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. So today, I'm going to be going over my top five defenses. Videos that I've already put out on YouTube will be a lot of them. And if there is a full scheme, I'll have a link in the description below for that as well. I already put out a Dolphins slash Giants defensive ebook. If you guys want to see that link, in the description below. Uh, other than that, let's get right into the video. I'm going to start off with the nickel 55. Now, there's a couple plays. One of the metas that everybody seems to be running is the Mike Blitz 3. Uh, I personally think that's a pretty good defense. I know you can get pressure with it. I always liked uh, the three Samuel Blitz. So when it comes to getting pressure, one of the first things you're going to want to do is you're going to want to, um, you know, basically send all your all your defensive linemen. You're going to want to blitz Wilkins here. He doesn't really do much dropping into coverage. He's too slow. I typically like to spread my defensive line, and then I like to bring this guy down into one of these gaps. This is going to be my user. I also want to make sure that I, I guess pass because that will just make sure that if it is a play action that these outside linebackers will not react. And then I'm going to basically hover this gap before I release. You can do either gap, but considering the shotgun formation, if it's going to be a run play, it's going to be an inside zone. So I'd rather plug this hole because that's the most likely area where the running back would run. So we'll go and we'll start here. As the play starts off though, we're basically just going to, uh, as you can see right there, we get inside zone. So like I said, there's definitely a good reason to be in that gap. So we're going to do it again. Like I said, you can come down this gap. You don't have to spread the defensive line. I just find that that's, uh, one of the better ways to go, but you can see it doesn't really matter. The pressure comes in anyway, and that's pretty much one of the best ways to get uh, pressure. Like I said, I have a nice speedy linebacker out there, Jerome Baker. Got to make sure you have your speed at this at these spots. And once again, if the running back's not blocking, there's not going to be anything in his way uh, as he goes right to, you know, I'm, I'm on the running back. If you watch the replay, like I just, I engage very shortly and I back away. Actually, I never got engaged because like I said, I typically try to loop to the right so that I can basically not get touched and then I'm all over that running back. And by the time I get into that, you know, set, he's already getting planted. So it's a super easy blitz to set up. If you're worried about that flat, I mean, you could always just hard flat. That's one thing that this game covers pretty well is hard flats. And like I said, really just, you know, I'm just basically slanting the defensive line outside, crashing outside, blitzing this or bringing this blitzer down into the, uh, to the gap. Once again, inside zones are gonna get shut down. As you can see right there, there's nowhere to go. Go on, let's do this one more time. I said I'd like to get more pass plays. I'll go ahead and I'm gonna I'm gonna hard flat just because I'm sure that uh, white in the flat will, will be you know that would be something that'll be there and you can see boom we're just getting very easy sacks. Cover three sky show four. This is something that works in a lot of different formations, but the way that I'm gonna use it, I'm gonna get instant pressure and I'm gonna get a lot of sacks. Let's go and let's pick that. So now as far as this defense goes, like I said, it's cover three. You know I I've, I've run a lot of people running cover three, so that was one of the reasons that I decided to uh, kind of mess around with this, but I much rather try to create pressure than just run a cover three basic. So all I'm gonna do here to try to get some pressure is I'm just gonna shift my defensive line to the one side. Then I'm going to slant them to the right as well. And then I'm just gonna basically, I mean, this guy here, he's out kind of far. I wanna cheat him in a little bit, but I basically wanna take one of these players Typically, I take the, the the one closest to this side, but I want to leave that hooker because there's so much action going on over there. And I'm just going to basically put him on a blitz and bring him in this gap. I'm also going to make sure that I guess pass because I just think that that helps. I don't you know make some get after the quarterback. They won't bite on play actions and stuff like that. And this is pretty much it. I'm going to try to uh, basically shoot this gap and basically hold as much lineman to the side as possible. As you can see right there, it almost looks like a screenplay. And the pressure came right off the edge and forced an incompletion on the very first play. So let's go and let's go to the replay to see what happened because it happened so fast, I didn't even really uh, see. But you can see when I do this, the entire offensive line jumps to the side. It's, it's I, did, I got sucked in, which wasn't really the plan. I had to disengage. But like I said, the whole point is to get this cornerback a free run. Now, I also wanna make sure I have my fastest guy there. For whatever reason, it typically is, but it's not not right now like online when I play in mutt I typically have Jalen Ramsey who's my best cornerback running that but for whatever reason he's not so I'll probably switch that out for a speed guy because he seemed to come in a little bit slow a little bit faster he probably would have had that sack but you can see at the end of the day it's a four man five protection blitz if I get disengaged and then we have a guy coming in free so I'm going to do that again. Like I said, shift my line to the right, slide them to the right as far as their attack lanes. I typically want this cornerback, I want to bring him in a little bit. I want to cheat him in because he's kind of far out. Um, if I do decide to bring this guy down, which is typically the guy that I like to do, 
Um, I gotta make sure I bring this safety over. That's probably the biggest thing, is I, I probably want him in the center of the field, because if I do, if I decide to bring this guy down, it's gonna create problems uh, for the deep safety because he's out of position. But this is typically the guy that I wanna use. So let's go and let's do that. Like I said, I have to jump back pretty quickly to get into the throwing lanes, or I could just decide to use the other Woo! guy. You can see right there, the pressure comes off the other side this time. So you can see there's a lot of opportunities uh, for pressure as we'll go to the instant replay. Like I said, I typically want this guy over here to get the pressure, but obviously I didn't pull the line that time. So you can see here, this guy on the other side comes in free uh, and he's getting to the rush. Now, once again, I had, to, I had to, I have to engage and get off a little bit quicker, but you can see how easy it is to get pressure on both sides of the field when it comes to this blitz. So we'll go and do that again. I'm going to continue to go with Jerome Baker because I think he's probably the better of the two. Like I said, I just want to sneak this guy in a little bit. I don't want to bring him over too much to the point where he's going to get picked up, but this is pretty much the look. So like I said, I will start over here. I never tried starting over here. Let's do that on this play. Let's see if that happens if I start all the way over here. If I can bring all these guys around, and you see, boom, we get that guy off the edge once again. So maybe I wasn't going over far enough because this is, you know, I, I run the splits. The way that I run the splits, I'll go back to the replay. The way that I run it, I typically start over the center, but it looked like it worked out even better uh, if I stayed over there. I didn't have to engage. You see that time look how the guard just basically uh follows me 71 here he follows me because he's expecting something this is ideal this is perfect because if the guard here is blocking nobody and i never got picked up and i never got suctioned in or engaged this is probably an even better way to run it the overload three sky press on the offensive side i would like to go random uh, i guess i will i guess i'll go random but i want to pick something uh, you know, we'll go ahead, we'll go with the bunch offset. This is basically meta. So we'll go with that. Now the setup for this is super easy. All I'm going to do is pinch the entire defense. That's the RB, R1, then down on the left stick. That's the first step. The next step is Y triangle. Then I'm going to baseline show blitz baseline. Now the purpose of that, I messed it up because this safety is supposed to come down too. And I might have actually did it one too many times because that other cornerback is supposed to drop back a little bit. There is going to be the look where the safeties and the cornerbacks are both at depths where they shouldn't get burned by any streaks or pass plays but also will be effective in shorter routes. They're closer to the line, so they'll be a little bit more uh, aggressive. And they'll, you know, like I said, it's, this to me is one of the better depths. When you baseline, show blitz, and baseline. The last step, well, the second last step is going to be to guess pass. But then the last step is going to be to blitz your user, which is this three rack here, and bring him right down into uh, this gap. That's all you really have to do. This should do a number of things. Number one, the number one run, run play you're going to see in gun formation is going to be the inside zone. This should stuff that because you can see all the inside zone lanes are going to be stuck. If he tries to take it outside, this cornerback here will take care of that. So that'll do a good job against run defense. Then you're also going to see the type of pressure that this gets. Whether it's a four-man, whether it's a, a blocking running back or not, we're still going to get pressure here. It's just going to come from different areas. So let's go and let's, like I said, I'm going to stay down in this box just for a Woo! second back out. You can see on the very first play, Jalen Hurts immediately recognizes that there's an un. Uh, an un block blitzer coming in we'll go to the replay here the point of this is to bring all these linemen in as tight as possible it doesn't matter whether the running backs blocking or not i think on this play he went out on a pattern you're going to see uh the pressure is typically going to come from this guy if that happens you can see right here this this uh this tackle here he gets in a position where he already knows like what am i doing here am i blocking this this defensive end am i blocking this cornerback it looks like for a second he's going to turn to the cornerback if he would have did that, this guy would have got all free. That's why I'm saying this pressure comes from multiple areas. The defensive end in front of him, or as an outside linebacker, I'm not really sure, but he would have got all free. So that's one of the things you're gonna see a lot in this particular series of plays. But you can see, we're gonna get that free cornerback pretty much every time. Just put your fastest cornerback, I forgot to mention that, put your fastest cornerback at this spot because that's gonna make a big difference. I mean, even your biggest hitter, your biggest playmaker, all that stuff's gonna be helpful having him at this cornerback spot. So we're gonna do that a few more times, but hopefully, um, you know, we, we'll just uh, get all the looks that we want. We want to get some run looks. We want to get some looks where the um, the running back is blocking. Uh, but, you know, really easy setup. I'll go ahead and I'll do this one time. Hopefully, we'll get that, blo that blo block running back. And then we did. Oh, I don't know what that was, but that looked... <laughs> I think both guys get in. I don't know if that was a, uh, a screenplay or something. That was weird. So here we get that second look. I was just talking about how sometimes you're going to see um, the cornerback get in. Other times you're going to see this look where this defensive end gets in or this outside linebacker. I'm not really sure once again. But Lane Johnson looks like he tries to pass him off to the running back. And then he goes out on the cornerback, which you can see right here. He does get that cornerback. Or no, he doesn't even get the cornerback. The cornerback runs right past him anyway. So both of these guys come right past. I don't know if that's why the running back, maybe he went to a check and release. He didn't block anybody and you can see we just have a screaming a gap and a really good outside cornerback 
pressure all in the same place. Now this is the formation right here, the two, four, five double A gap. There's tons of different double A gaps. It pretty much works the same in all of them. It's the mid blitz. Everybody knows about this play. Now, as far as this play goes, like I said, there's a couple of different setups you can do. Number one, I used to do this, where I would blitz this guy here, bring him down into the box, and basically just hover this center. Uh, I don't typically get picked up on the, on, you know, he doesn't typically pick me up on the blitz, but I can do this and basically drop right back into coverage. This is a decent setup. It still works pretty good. You're also going to make sure that these safeties are closer to their assignments. If I do this, this setup here, I always want to guess pass too, because that's going to be one of the most important things to make sure that these uh, defensive ends don't bite on the play action. But guess pass, that's important. And the last thing you can do if you want to is spread the defensive line, which you can see is just going to basically, um, you know, get these outside linebackers in a, a little bit uh, better spacing so that they get avoided by any, you know, any of the tackles. So this is something you can do. So you're going to get a lot of pressure doing that, but that's not typically the way I like to do it anymore. Like I said, this is something you can do. I still do it from time to time. Like I said, you just want to make sure that you get that safety down. I'll go ahead and I'll bring this guy back. Like I said, this is real simple. Just guess pass. I hover the center because it's going to basically make all these linemen come in quickly. And you can see you're going to get instant pressure that way. But it's still, like I said, there's a better way to do it where you have a little bit more coverage. Now, let's say that we're going to do that first setup against something where the running back's gonna go out in a pattern, like the double in sale. So that's why I prefer this second setup, especially against an offense like this, where I'm just gonna walk these safeties down once again. And then I don't have to really do anything other than just bring this guy over and basically uh, and put it, you know, once again, guess pass, because that's the most important part, but just bring this guy over to the defensive end is all I really have to do to get that other defensive end off the edge free. So now giving the opportunity to drop down to the running back, drop into the tight end, whatever. You can see the quick pass is still there, but that's something that, you know, the computer's going to do. The, your, your opponent isn't always going to do that. So let's go and let's do that one more time. Like I said, walk these safeties down. That's probably the most important part of the setup. Bring this guy over. You always want to bring in the guy that's over the running back because even if he's pass blocking, this other outside linebacker will typically get around that running back anyway, either via the play action or just based off of the pass protection. As you can see right there, like I said, that's something where man coverage will typically take away that table route. They won't get much. So a lot of times to eliminate those quick throws, I'll just press. I'll just bring everybody down, take away those short routes. And now you'll see how, you know, basically all the short throws will be will be swallowed up and Cam Newton is going to be getting taken sacks because, you know, all the short routes are taken away if you take away the space. So then last but not least for this video, I'm going to show you guys what's probably the best run defense, and that's the cover for drop. We'll go ahead and we'll pick that. On the offensive side, we'll actually kick it up a notch. We'll just go with straight random eye form. So I don't know where the ball is going to go. All I'm going to do if I want to bring these guys down into uh, put them in a position to make plays against the run. I'm gonna hit wide triangle, then I'm gonna hit um, base align, which is left stick to the right. Then I'm gonna hit wide triangle, left stick to the left, which is show blitz. Then I'm gonna do it one more time to base align again so these cornerbacks don't get cooked. So basically everybody's playing down, they're playing tight. Um, I could do things with my linebackers and my defensive line if I want to. Sometimes I'll pinch him if it's, if it's like a, a short situation as he snagged, he, snagged, he hiked the ball, I wasn't ready, but you can see he still didn't get much as it was just a screenplay. Uh, or a swing pass but ultimately this is something where you can set this up really quick like I said I don't want those cornerbacks down too far because if they're down too far a simple you know streak can cook them so they're in a good position and these safeties here they react really really well to the run if you, you'll see hopefully they'll, they'll run a couple of uh, run plays and we'll be able to see them in action but ultimately this is pretty much the base setup and then like I said if you want to you could really mess with these uh, adjustments you could I would say bring this guy down would make a lot of sense just bring him to the line give yourself as much uh, you know coverage as possible this would probably be the look this would be something that I would do to try to uh, you know if somebody's running the ball against this formation a lot as we haven't gotten any run plays yet and Cam Newton once again has to throw the ball away because it's a good defense cover four is going to give you a lot of zone own options so let's go and let's do that again they like said here you know this is going to be the look right here i mean i have i have outside containment which is these guys are going to hard flat them if i think it's going to be a run you can see both sides i have a guy who can hold down that edge and these safeties if they ever run the ball you will see these safeties play the run really well in cover four although we're not getting any run plays at all cam who's not throwing the ball at all yeah look at this i mean he's oh really we're gonna get a fumble six we're gonna get a fumble cell because Cam Newton gave up on the play. So, like I said, there's just coverage wise is great. We might have to force pick a run play because I'm trying to show run defense and I'm not getting any run plays. So, we weren't getting a lot of run plays there. So, I'm gonna have to back out and pick one myself. Pick that cover for drop one more time. We're gonna go with, uh, we'll go with, uh, you know, just like the most common run play in the world, which is the inside zone. 
So we're going to pick that. Like I said, setting this up, we're going to go base align, show blitz, base align. You have a lot of smaller guys anyway. I typically are going to bring these guys in. You got a lot of smaller guys on the field. So you really have to make sure that, you know, you match personnel. I don't want to be overpowered by an I form anyway. So let's go ahead and let's pinch that defensive line, spread those linebackers. And this is pretty much going to be the look. Now, when it, I'm not going to cheat to the, you know, for, since I know it's an inside zone, I could easily slide protection or slide my defense over, which obviously will, will help to shut that down. But I will leave it as is just to kind of, you know, be fair. I don't want to, I don't want to, I didn't want to do it this way because I don't want to tip my hand that I know where the play is going. But this is pretty much going to be the run defense. I'm going to try to stay out of it. I'm going to try to stay in my lane. And now you can see the safeties typically shoot down and fill those gaps. So let's go to the replay because I was waiting for a long time just to show what these safeties do. In cover four, these typically the safeties will play the run first. And you'll see they just basically walk right down to the box. That's what makes this a really good run defense is because they will play down Cover three safeties won't do that. Cover two safeties won't do that. Cover four safeties will play down. They will fill. And you can see right here, this guy here just basically, he makes the play, stacks it. This guy here probably could have tackled him for a two-yard gain, but he gets past him a little bit and it's still a really good run defense. If you're giving up three yards of carry, which is exactly what that gave up, you're going to have a very good run defense and people are going to give up on it. So I'll go ahead and I'll do that again. I mean, you could always, you know, since, it's, since we know it's an inside zone, we could always uh, just do a shift too, which is something that it's just a run-stopping defensive tip. I mean, that's probably, something that anytime I come out in a uh, and I see a shotgun I typically shift the line because inside zone is really the only option so you can do that and give yourself a little bit of an advantage too and then you can see like I said you're really giving up minimal gains at best so that's it that's the video if you guys want to see more defensive uh, scheme videos more videos like this do me a favor hit the like button let me know in the comment section other than that thanks for watching man my shit out need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my bids and more link in the description below. Thank you.